Good morning to everyone. Thank you for coming to what promises to be, I think, a very far-reaching and very timely conference, as others will tell you. I'm John Shattuck, the President and Rector of Central European University, and it's my great pleasure to host, uh, as the President of the University, this uh, conference on the Eastern Partnership. Um, the topic, as we know, is very far-reaching. Um, what is the idea of Europe, in some respects, is presented by this conference? How does it relate, that idea, to Eastern neighbors in the Eastern neighbors of the European Union? Has this idea gotten weaker uh, in light of recent developments in the EU with respect to its relations with Russia, Ukraine, and specifically, what's happening to the whole idea of the uh, EU Eastern Partnership? So these are very big topics. And I know they will be explored with great interest and great precision by many of our speakers. I want to particularly thank our partners, uh, CEU's partners, in hosting this conference, the Latvian Embassy. Thank you so much. Of course, Latvia is in. Uh, a very crucial position today in respect to all of these questions. And thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for being here with us today. And the uh, Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, which uh, frequently co-hosts events of this kind. Thank you so much for uh, doing that. Um, our Center for EU Enlargement Studies, under the very able leadership of Peter Balas, who all of you know, um, former Hungarian foreign, foreign minister and former EU commissioner, um, is at the heart of CEU's activities with respect to these issues, regional issues related to geopolitics and to the relationship among countries in the region. Um, the center is a major resource on these issues, and uh, this is a very timely uh, opportunity uh, to explore them before the summit that's coming up later this month. Um, in Riga, and that's a very exciting prospect. Um, there are many, of course, distinguished participants in the, in the conference, and I certainly won't uh, introduce or recognize them all. They are going to be introduced to you during the course of the day. But I, I do, in particular, want to uh, thank and welcome our two keynote speakers, uh, Andris Pibalgs, uh, who is an advisor to the president of Latvia and a former uh, Commissioner of the EU for Development, thank you very much for being here, and my good friend Jolt Nemeth, who is a distinguished parliamentarian and diplomat, uh, current chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Hungarian Parliament, uh, with long expertise um, on the issues that are being explored here today. Thank you so much, Jolt, for being here. Um, let me just say a very few words. You'll hear many, many more words during the course of the day, and many of them probably more profound that I will give you, about the goals of the Eastern Partnership, the issues and challenges that it faces, and what needs to be addressed if this partnership is to continue as a live prospect. The goals, I think we know, um, generally speaking, are to strengthen the political, economic, and trade relations among the countries who are members of the partnership, uh, and also to strengthen their relationship uh, not only with each other, but uh, above all with the European Union, um, to promote the rule of law, generally speaking, and human rights and the values that are uh, so central to the European Union, um, to develop joint institutions insofar as possible, um, especially on trade and economic relations. Uh, institutional development cross borders is not the easiest thing in the world these days, as we know. It never has been easy, and it's particularly challenging uh, at the moment. But that is certainly a goal and a very noble and lofty goal of the Eastern Partnership. The challenges and issues that the partnership faces are many. Uh, you know them all. Um, diverse members among the partnership, countries in different situations, many of them with conflicting interests, 
among themselves and conflicting with their own neighbors who are not members of the partnership, uh, and in some cases, common interests, but interests which are not necessarily advanced by the Eastern partnership. There's, of course, very specifically the Ukraine conflict, which, which we know is coloring almost everything in the region at the moment. Um, there's the issue of relations with Russia among the members of the partnership and between the European Union and uh, Russia. And of course, the launch of the Eurasian Union, which has got its own very uh, lofty goals and uh, is not necessarily in the same framework as either the EU or the Eastern Partnership. Um, there are also internal stresses, as we well know, inside the European Union, uh, a result of economic and political issues that are swirling around um, which I won't detail for you, you know them all, but certainly the stresses that are reflected inside the EU are, not, are among the issues and challenges facing the Eastern Partnership. And then I suppose one has to list as a final challenge the apparent, and I use that adjective carefully, the apparent end of EU Eastern expansion. Um, certainly it is not on the agenda at the moment. Uh, but and perhaps uh, for uh, forever, but this is an apparent fact, a reality that needs to be reflected. So a final uh, set of comments, just as really in, in a way as uh, challenges to the conference, what needs to be done to address these issues that I've just very briefly listed? What can be done? What sort of rethinking is possible with respect to the concept of the Eastern Partnership? Um, I suppose I would list, you may put this elsewhere on the list, uh, but I'd put at the top, stabilizing the situation in Ukraine, and ultimately, and sooner rather than later, negotiating uh, very creatively uh, an end of the Ukraine conflict, an end of the conflict which will in fact be negotiated rather than fought out on the ground. And there are certainly grounds and frameworks for doing that. Uh, this is not a conference about the end of the Ukraine conflict. However, this is a topic that's very much on the agenda of the Center for uh, European Union Enlargement Studies. Um, then I would list as a second challenge, uh, which is clearly related to ending the Ukraine conflict, and that is finding a new modus vivendi with Russia finding a new modus vivendi with Russia, between Russia and the EU in particular. Here, as an American, I would say the United States is very, um, it, it can play a very negative or potentially positive role in this, and the US is therefore very much part of this new mm -hmm. modus vivendi. Not only a modus vivendi with Russia, but also a modus vivendi or an understanding of what this concept of a Eurasian Union is all about and how that uh, relates to what's happening with the EU and the Eastern Partnership. Um, I think it also, looking to the future, I think we also need to find a way not only of stabilizing Ukraine and negotiating the end of the conflict, but also reopening some reasonable pathway for uh, Eastern partners to have their own relationship with the European Union, which may also be very much complemented by relationships that they would have further to the east. Uh, and so that's why this concept of a modus vivendi is so crucial. And I guess the final uh, challenge is, is very clear, and it's very exciting, because I think it's a challenge to the countries of Central and Eastern Europe who can play a crucial role in addressing all of these issues uh, because of their geographic location, their, their, their new relationship, not so new anymore, but relatively new with the European Union, and their relationship with the Eastern partners. So clearly the countries of this region are in a crucial role to address all these issues. So thank you very much and welcome to the conference and we look forward to all of your participation. <laughs> Thank you.
Let, let me now, with great pleasure, introduce uh, our colleague, uh, the ambassador of Latvia to Budapest, uh, Imants Viegis. Please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shatuk. And uh, uh, on behalf of the uh, Embassy of Latvia uh, in Hungary and uh, the current EU presidency, I'd also like to welcome you to today's conference and thank you for being with us. Uh, I'd like, uh, first of all, to thank the uh, Friedrich Ebert Stiftung uh, for their support uh, for this conference. Uh, it actually mirrors some very close cooperation that colleagues of mine have in Riga with uh, the uh, Friedrich uh, Ebert Stiftung. And indeed, I was participating myself in a conference that they were uh, contributing to just a few weeks ago. So thanks very much for that. Uh, I must say that I'm very pleased that we are cooperating in this conference with the Central European University. Uh, the CEU is, of course, a beacon of liberal democracy here in Hungary. And it's right that uh, Latvia has also benefited very much from the uh, support, uh, in particular, of uh, George Soros. Uh, uh, in fact, we have, uh, with the, his fund in Latvia, uh, there are a number of uh, young politicians, uh, leading figures in Latvia, who have benefited from studying here at the CEU, and one of them is with us uh, today, and that's uh, my good colleague, uh, Lolita Chigan, who was a, a lead speaker uh, uh, later on in, in today's conference, and she spent uh, uh, a fine year here at CEU, CEU back in uh, 1999, prior to our joining the EU, when it was possible, when it was not possible to go to other uh, European universities at that time. So. Uh, uh, I think that the uh, support that uh, Mr. Soros has given to, uh, in the process of re-establishing uh, democratic institutions, particularly in Latvia, after half a century of Soviet totalitarianism, totalitarianism uh, has really uh, been beneficial uh, to, to the country. And, and we see that this is also the case for the current Eastern Partnership countries. Uh, the last time I was here, at a, uh, uh, an address given by Michael Ignatieff uh, in this same room, uh, George Soros gave a, uh, a very persuasive uh, statement about the need uh, financially uh, for, to give uh, financial support sorry, to, to Ukraine in particular. And so I think that's, that's very important and it fits in very nicely to this whole question of the Eastern Partnership that we're addressing today. Uh, of course, uh, Latvia is very proud to be holding the presidency for the first time uh, of the European Union. And uh, uh, we're very happy to be guiding the agenda uh, in the way that presidents are, presidencies are able to do that. Uh, and one of the priorities that uh, we have enunciated in what is called the trio of presidencies, because we joined in with uh, Italy from whom we took over and will be handing over to Luxembourg on the 1st of July, uh, one of the priorities is uh, referred to as being engaged Europe, and this is, of course, concerning the global role of the European Union. And as part of that, uh, the European neighbourhood policy, as it is known, uh, is indeed a, a very important part of the engaged Europe. And uh, the European neighbourhood policy covers not only the Eastern Partnership, but also the southern rim of, uh, of Europe. And we've seen only these last few days uh, the important challenges that uh, the European Union is facing uh, on issues of migration, uh, not least uh, the challenges uh, to security that are presented uh, uh, in some of our southern uh, neighbourhood countries. Um, and the uh, concerning the... Uh, this policy of neighbourhood, I think the concerns of the European Union are really to uh, promote uh, peace, stability and security in our neighbourhoods, whether this is in the east or in the south. Uh, the, one of the, the main events of uh, Latvia's presidency will be taking place in a few weeks' time. This is the uh, Eastern Partnership Summit uh, on the 21st and 22nd of uh, May in Riga, where we will be having all of the heads of, of state and government from the EU member countries and uh, from the six partner countries convening in Riga to decide how to move ahead uh, in, in this uh, relationship between the EU and our six Eastern partnerships countries. We're very pleased that uh, Prime Minister Orban and uh, Foreign Minister Siarto have already confirmed that they will be attending the summit uh, 
on behalf of Hungary. And I want to stress that the Eastern Partnership is not confrontational. Uh, the policy is really uh, to uh, engage and to demonstrate to our Eastern partners that the European Union is concerned about them, is committed to uh, supporting uh, them, and also uh, to allow the six countries to decide for themselves uh, what sort of relationship they would like with the European Union, how they would like to move ahead. And this whole question of in the individual approach, I think, is something that uh, will be reflected during the course of uh, the Eastern Partnership uh, Summit uh, in Riga. Uh, I'd also, uh, on behalf of the Latvian Embassy, like to thank all of the speakers who are participating today. And once again, I'd also uh, echo uh, what uh, the Rector said uh, in thanking our two keynote speakers, uh, 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 Zolt Nemeth, the, uh, uh, one of the top foreign policy specialists uh, in Hungary and chairman of the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee of the Hungarian Parliament, and Andis Pierbalgs, uh, uh, Latvia's uh, outstanding commissioner during two terms uh, of the commission, and he reminded me last night that uh, uh, when the idea of Eastern Partnership was conceived, of course, he was there in the Commission discussing uh, this very idea. Uh, so uh, I'd also like to uh, offer a special thanks to uh, uh, Professor Peter Balash, the Director for the Centre of East EU, EU Enlargement Studies here in the CEU, because, uh, and, and to thank his team as well for the uh, excellent cooperation that we've had in the lead-up uh, to uh, this conference. Uh, and we discussed as we were considering the timing of this conference that it would be very important to time it uh, just uh, a few weeks before the summit itself. And in fact, uh, in closing, I'd like to say that this morning I was listening to uh, uh, the main Latvian radio uh, station, uh, uh, the 8.30 News in Latvia, uh, which amongst the headlines was a comment that uh, today in Budapest, this uh, Eastern Partnership Summit is taking place uh, with a view to the conclusions of the summit giving some input to the uh, summit itself. So uh, I think that gives, uh, gives all of our speakers and the participants uh, uh, a big responsibility to making sure that we have some good recommendations for the summit itself. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, I also would like to welcome you to our conference. I prepared a small opening speech stressing the importance of the Eastern Partnership and the initiative uh, of the Latvian Presidency. However, as everything has been already said, what should be said in such an opening, I only want to concentrate on saying thank you to our partners the Center for EU Enlargement Studies of the Central European University and the Latvian Embassy for setting up this conference. Also, I would like to thank all our panelists and speakers for having accepted the invitation. And of course, I would like to thank you for taking the time, joining us today, and uh, yeah, listening to all the speeches. So I just want to ask our keynote speakers to enter the podium, and I think everything what is left is to declare this conference open. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>